Hi, this is Peter. I am the CEO and co-founder of OpenMeter, the usage-based billing platform that developers and business people love because they can change pricing, iterate on packaging, or provision a sales deal on the dashboard without any developer involvement. Let me show you how it works. So I'm going to log into OpenMeter first. And I created an account that's completely empty. So we are going to set up this account. You can see I call this Translate AI. So in this demo, we are going to use this imaginary product that's called Translate AI and uses an LLM to do something like Google Translate just for entire PDF documents. So maybe you send in a PDF document in a foreign language like German and you got it back in English translated. So I am not sure yet how I want to price this product, but I know I'm paying for a number of tokens that I use with the LLM. Um, the customer probably syncing a number of PDF pages. But the page can have different amount of words. So I'm thinking maybe I should charge based on tokens, a number of pages or number of words. So I'm going to play with those levers in this product. So first of all, we will set up metering. Open meter is three product in one. We have a real time metering that makes really easy for developers to track customer consumption, like how many pages was translated in a very accurate way. The second product is a no-code product catalog. This is where business people can put together an entire pricing and packaging and provision it to customers or sales can provision a deal without any developer involvement. And the third product I'm going to show you is our billing and invoicing that helps you to collect revenue with different payment providers. So I'm going to show you that one too. So first, let's set up the meters to collect how many pages our customers are translating, how many tokens they are using. To ensure accuracy and it's auditable, open meter metering is event-based. So in your application, when the billable transaction happens, you can send us an event and open meter are going to aggregate that over time. So to set up a meter, we are defining how open meter should process an event. You can see here an example of an event skeleton using the cloud events format. We have a couple of fields here like time, ID, that use, for example, to tell when the event happened and deduplicate the events by ID. It's really useful if your microservice architecture retries. In the data payload, you define what you want to send us. So if you want to send number of tokens, you can put tokens as the property, you can pick the aggregation sum, and you can define an event type, how you want to filter the event. In this case, maybe we will call this translate. Um, so basically, if you have multiple event types, you can tell the meter which event types to listen on, and multiple meters can listen on the same event type, which can be also very useful. So let's set up meters for example. Here I'm going to switch to a documentation because we have examples for this Translate AI. So here I'm going to switch to a documentation because we have examples in the documentation making it very easy for you to reproduce what we are doing here. So if a docs, if you go to the metering common examples, you can find the same what I'm doing. So you can see in this imaginary application, we will send an event that the data property has a couple of things. We want to maybe price on that or enforce limits. Which LLM model was used for the translation? How many pages, how many tokens, and how many words? was in the document that was translated. So your application would send this event every time a translation happened. Your application can send this using our SDKs by pop that for popular languages we have, or can use collectors, which if you have a data already in another system, then you can pull them in. We also have collectors for like Kubernetes and NVIDIA's Run AI, that if you have a running workload like a GPU or a pod, then you can get how many seconds it was running. So Open Meter has multiple ways to track usage. Today, we are going to send the events with curl. So let's set up a meter. The first meter are going to track number of pages. We have these quick snippets in documentation, so I'm going to use them. It fills out everything. It fills out the event type filter, the aggregation, and the pages. Let's create. Let's super quickly create the next one for words. Almost looks the same. And then finally, checking the number of tokens. Here we have one extra thing we haven't used before. So it uses the same event type, also some aggregation, but we have group by labels. So this is to track basically which 
model was used, GPT-3, GPT-3. So now we have three meters. And obviously, if we open these meters, they are completely empty. I already set up an API key for, key for myself, but we are going to send in event. Here is an example for the event. I'm going to use curl. So let's switch to the event debugger, which is very useful to see how events are sent in. And let's produce some usage. So to this post events endpoint, I'm going to send uh, this example event. And you can see I use ID1. ID can be any string, but because we deduplicate based on this, be sure it's unique. Otherwise, your event will be deduplicated. So I'm sending in. And now if I switch back to the events page and I'm pressing a refresh, I already received the event. That's how fast open meter is. And you can see if I open it, that we have indeed the same event what we sent in. And if I'm coming to the meter page, then we see this showing up. So we have five pages and we have the tokens used. So great. So let's set up the pricing for this imaginary transit AI product. So we are going to create some plans. We are going to create a free plan and a pro plan that's paid. So first of all, we are going to set up some features in open meter. A feature is basically what customer facing, what's going to show up on the invoice. A feature can describe something that you charge for it, something that you maybe want to give access to the customer, or maybe something you want to limit. So let's set up a couple of features here. You can see we have some a notice here that we are in the sandbox mode. So this sandbox app not going to collect any real revenue, but later in this demo, we are going to connect with the payment gateway and we are going to collect some real money. So let's create a feature. So the first feature, I'm going to AI tokens. The second thing, and I see I picked the meter for this one. The second thing what we are going to track is the number of pages. So let's call it translated pages. And the meter what we are going to use is the pages. Let's create one more for the words. Again, these are all metered. And now let's create some non-metered features. Maybe premium models that we only want to give to premium customers. And maybe for enterprise customers, we have some security features like SAML SSO. So we are not, I'm not picking meters for these. So this is the features that we are going to use in our pricing and packaging. So I come here and let's create our first plan. Let's call it premium. So I create a draft. You can see in OpenMeter, every plan is versioned. So you can decide when you publish a plan, when you are ready to give it to the new customers. And you can also migrate customers on all the version of the plan to the new one, which I will show a little bit later. So let's start to add the rate cards. So the rate cards basically is the, you can describe the price and the access for a certain feature. So you can come here and maybe in the free feature, because we know LLMs are pretty expensive, we want to limit with how much a free customer can use. So we are not charging anything, we keep it on free. And then we come here and we are going to say that this is metered and every month the customer has access to 10,000 of this. This is quite useful because in modern tools, in modern AI pricing products, there are lots of knobs like how many limits, what features you have access. Just to look, which is very popular these days, um, you can see that it's one thing that there is a price, but there is a bunch of other kind of if the customer has access to premium features or not, how many of the certain feature can they access? Do they have access to these security features, to this admin dashboard? So pricing and packaging in a modern application is a lot more than just a specific price. We could have lots of different things like usage-based components, overage charges, a lot more things here. The good thing in OpenMeter, you can describe all of them. So we just describe the limit component and Maybe we also want to limit how many pages can be translated, that like hoping that customer is going to upgrade uh, when they want to translate more. So we keep that on free. This is the free plan. And we set up a limit. Maybe let's allow 10 pages per month in this free plan. And I'm saving it. So I'm ready now. We have 10,000 tokens defined, 10 pages. Let's publish it. Then let's define another plan. We are also going to define our pro plan. This is going to be the premium trade plan. So again, we keep adding some features to it. For example, we know that maybe pages is the most important for things, or at least that's what I want to try out very first. So I want to 
charge customers a flat fee, um, maybe monthly in advance for $250. We want to allow 100 pages. This is the premium plan. So we want to give access to the premium models, but maybe not the SAML SSO. Maybe we keep that for um, enterprise customers. We are not charging any extra for this now, but we are making it available. In Open Meter, you could set up usage-based fees as well. So we could set up a fee that, for example, AI tokens cost like 0 0.1 per unit, minimum commitments, tiered pricing. So there's a lot more pricing model. But to keep things simple, I'm just, just to keep on these 100 pages per month for 250 access to the premium models. I'm also going to publish this. So now let's give this free plan to a customer. So for free customer, probably you are going to do this through the API, but let's do this quickly here. So I'm creating a customer. I'm giving a name to it. You could also give a key. You can use your own database key. That makes it really easy to look up customers in OpenMeter. So we are creating this customer. You can see OpenMeter telling us this customer is now using the Sandbox application. So we are not going to do any real charges in the background. Um, and let's start a subscription. So I'm just picking this premium subscription and I'm just saying next. OpenMeter tells me what it's going to give to this customer. And when I press it, you can see this is what OpenMeter provisions. And if you scroll down, you can even see that OpenMeter already provisioned this 10,000 token grant and this 10 pages for this month. So we are going to come here to the entitlement and we are going to play a little bit with this limit. We are going to send in more usage and see how OpenMeter tracks it in real time and how the customer balance is going to change. So I'm switching back to send some curls. I'm increasing my ID again, just to be sure the event is unique. I'm sending this in. And when we are switching back, what we are going to see, it's already updated that 5,000 usage was sent in and 50% of the balance was used. Let's send in another event and let's see what happens. Again, I'm increasing the event counter. And now if we switch back, what we are going to see, I'm updating my page, um, that the event is already got processed and the access changed to no. So in OpenMeter, you can use OpenMeter to enforce these limits. You can do it in multiple ways. One way is you can just keep reading OpenMeter if the customer has still access. Or the other way, we have a notification feature where you can set up webhooks for certain thresholds in percentage or in actual value. And that way you can flip a bit in your system when you want to change the access, or you can even use this to let your salespeople know when someone is ready for expansion. So now we set up a free plan. Let's now set up a payment gateway and let's start to collect some real revenue. So I'm switching to apps. OpenMeter has a marketplace. You, there you can extend OpenMeter capability. You can integrate, for example, payment gateways like Stripe. So let's use Stripe in this demo. I'm going to fill the API key. In the video, probably you already see the app installed. So I'm going to now switch back and we are going to give this paid 250 per month pro plan to a customer. Let's use the API this time to set up a customer just to see you how easy it is. Let's use the API this time. So I'm going to switch back and send some curl request. So OpenMeter has this simplified API to connect with Stripe. It's basically what we are going to do if you're familiar with the Stripe checkout session that's giving you a way to collect the customer payment method. It can be either a form in the browser with the credit card details, or you can build your own version of that. So OpenMeter gives um, an integration with that that's going to give you the same what the Stripe API would give you, but also creates an OpenMeter customer, creates a Stripe customer, and connects the two. This API also accepts existing customer IDs if you have, so you can use existing Stripe or OpenMeter customers, but this time I'm going to let OpenMeter to create both. So I'm filling up, this is going to be called StarCorp, and this is going to attribute usage to this customer too. I'm calling it. And you can see what OpenMeter returned to us is the OpenMeter customer ID Stripe customer ID and the same things what Stripe would return you when you create a checkout session. So this URL is going to be URL to a form. 
And you can see I set it up that we will redirect to just open meter when we are done. So when we open this, we will see a payment form. So I'm putting it down here. And we got this payment form. I'm going to fill this out super quickly. So you can see I put in um, just what usually would put in when you pay at Stripe. I use this uh, Stripe test credit card. This is the US Visa card um, that's great for testing. So when you click this, a couple of things are going to happen. We will be redirected to Open Meter because that's what we gave uh, in that API request. And in the background, Open Meter going to create the customer and set it up with Stripe. And we are indeed redirected. You go to the customer, you can see that StarCorp is set up with Stripe. You can see that we have a Stripe customer ID here. The default payment ID is set up. Everything looks great. And if we come here, we can see this customer in Stripe. So you can see this customer is indeed created in Stripe and has a payment method. Great. Now we can assign a paid plan to it. So let's start a new subscription. And this time we are going to pick the pro plan. So a really great thing for salespeople and account executives, in OpenMeter, everything can be customized. So if you turn on customization, then you can come here and you can decide that, no, this customer didn't pay for the premium model. We actually agreed on a completely different pricing. This customer going to pay per page, per usage. Maybe there is a minimum commitment. So you can do a lot. Uh, for the sake of simplicity here, let's just start the pro plan simply. So. Yep, OpenMeter telling me that this customer we have access to premium plan and 100 pages. So because this plan has a 250 uh, monthly recurring fee, um, we can see in Stripe what is charged for it. So if you go to the invoices, you can see that we have an invoice for this customer in gathering state and we can manually advance it. So I'm approving it. And now this invoice gets synchronized to Stripe. So if we open this invoice in Stripe, you can see indeed the StarCorp customer has an invoice for this 250. Um, now we have tax calculation enabled. So Stripe going to take care of tax, going to collect the payment. You can already see there is a payment going out here. So everything is done. That's how easy it is to collect revenue with Stripe while you are using open meter billing and you have the flexibility around pricing and packaging. So one more thing I want to show to you. Let's go to the free plan. Maybe we decide that we want to introduce a concept called reverse trial, when the customer for a limited period get access to all the premium features for free, and after that goes into a limited premium plan. This is great to show the customers what your product can do and kind of make them addicted to the product. So I'm going to create a new version here. And here, we haven't talked about this so far, but in open method, you can describe time-based changes. So I'm adding a phase here, and I'm going to call it the reverse trial phase. It's going to only take one week. That's how long we give access to premium features. Now you can see what happened here. We have two timelines, and the rate cards are completely independent from these phases. So in the default phase, the, what's the indefinite phase, we kept everything the same, but in this reverse trial, we are going to give access to premium features. I'm enabling the premium models for free. The customer can translate unlimited amount of pages for free. So I'm giving basically the best of everything. And after that, we are taking away the premium model access and exposing limits. So if you publish this, then the new customer is already getting the new version of this free plan. But if you go to an existing customers, then you can see OpenMeter telling you that there is an update available because this customer is on the V1. So in OpenMeter, it's really great that you can keep old customers on the old pricing and you can decide if you want to migrate them to V2. And that's how easy it is to move to a customer to a new version of the plan. So that's what I wanted to show you today. And thank you for your attention and see you next time. Bye.